Good morning, Knicks Nation. Today is Sunday. It is the 21st day of November 2021. I hope you're healthy and COVID-free today, and I hope that all your needs in terms of food, shelter, clothing, as well as health and that of your family are being met. Blessings upon those that work in the healthcare field, trying every day, even on weekends, to save lives. Blessings upon those that pick up garbage for us to keep our sidewalks and streets clean and those that make deliveries for our convenience. Double blessings on those that are trying to help rescue, deliver, and, and, and save men and women, teenagers, boys and girls, babies and toddlers from human trafficking, from sex slavery, from pornography and child pornography, from child molestation and pedophilia, as well as prostitution for both adult prostitution and child prostitution that goes on all over the earth and all over the United States, unfortunately. Finally, blessings upon the homeless, 600,000 people in the United States, men, women, children, and families without a roof over their head right now, and millions also around the world in same or worse condition. Blessing upon them, for theirs is the kingdom. There was a basketball game last night, and there will be a basketball game tonight. Last night, the New York Knicks played. Our Knicks played against the Houston Rockets at Madison Square Garden. Um, they won the game. So, okay, so they won. But I have to say, uh, I have not been as disappointed after a win uh, in a long time. Anytime the Knicks win is a good night. But I'm I'm bothered by what we're seeing right now. And, and okay, in all fairness, let me just say this. And some of y'all get carried away on the negative side. Like I said, this part of the Knicks Nation, it is what it is. I don't like to get carried away one way or the other, especially not on the negative side. Like y'all, some of y'all talking about it's over, trade everybody, uh, we're going for the lottery. Let's, uh, somebody implying that you, uh, you want to, uh, purposely lose or just get the highest pick. It's just some stupidity out there right now. But no. We don't need all of that. When you're in a bad situation in a relationship, what you try to do is work through it. You don't just dump it. Especially if you've dumped it multiple times and it hasn't worked. After a while, you have to realize the problem is not with the other person. It's with you. And the Knicks have done that for 20 years. Trading, trading picks, trading players, picking players, not developing them. It's been going on a long time and it's not the players. It was the Knicks. So now they have a competent management team. They have a competent scouting team and they have a competent coaching team. Some of y'all will never be happy in New York. So you're always trying to crap on this coach, no matter what coach it is, especially if it wasn't the coach you wanted them to pick. Get over it. We have a good coach and we have a good coaching staff. Right now, from what I saw last night, again, we're watching it. Okay, so Tom Thibodeau's committed to Kemba Walker. Okay, I'm, I'm going to accept that. Okay, enough of whining about it. It is what it is. Kemba's in the starting lineup. And until he's hurt, until he, until Tom changed his mind, it is what it is. That's what it's going to be. But last night as I watched it, I did see, of course, Kemba get beat off the dribble a couple of times, but that wasn't the big deal. It just seemed the first quarter last night, it ended up 21 to 13 in favor of the Rockets, the first quarter. It was the worst first quarter of basketball I've seen in New York Knicks. It's been a long time since I've seen the first quarter that bad. They were just, comp and what it was, they were completely out of sync. Like, almost like they didn't know where each other was going to be. They were throwing the ball away. They were taking bad shots. It was just a complete, Utter ugly first quarter. And the only reason it really to me it was 21 to 13 is because Houston, as a young team does, was trying their best to give the game to the Knicks, throwing the ball away themselves, missing easy shots. Um, they were really doing what young teams do. And so my disappointment wasn't just that the, the lack of cohesion offensively. It was that we didn't we're playing down to the competition. That, that's what I'm seeing. 
They're playing down to the competition. Now, that works in two ways, right? So today we're playing Chicago. Chicago is not Houston. Houston is barely an NBA team because of how young they are. They, they have a whole bunch of young kids. I mean, you're talking about Sangoon. You're talking about Sean Tate. You're talking about uh, um, Jalen Green. These are young players, right? And and then they got still Josh Christopher on the bench there. It's a young team. So you expect them. The young teams make a lot of mistakes, and then they actually, even if they get a lead, they're going to give you a chance to come back because they're young and inexperienced. It happens. But Chicago is not. <laughs> Chicago's a real NBA team. And they're in the hunt for the top seed in the East right now. And they're really playing very well. I I knew they had talent. I wasn't expecting them to be this good this soon. I thought it would take time for them to gel, like it's taking the Knicks time to gel. But it's not. They're, they're, they seem to fit immediately right away. And some of you are looking at them as if everybody does that. It's not that easy to do that. It's just not. Don't expect that every team does that. Somebody said, Chicago, they're not going, we can't do it. That's Chicago. Stop looking on the other side of the room at another girl. You got one. And if you keep wanting to switch her, the problem is not her. Again, it's you. Okay? So, no. They just happen to be able to do it. Very few teams do that. Like I said, even when LeBron and Wade and Bosch got together, it was ugly at first. It was to the point where people were trying to talk about firing uh, uh, Spo at that time. Because of the trouble they were having connecting. But of course, once they did, they became a juggernaut, you know. Now, the Knicks are a grinding out team. That's just Tom Thibodeau style. They're a grinded out type of team. And, and, and generally, when you think of a grind team, you have a couple of things. You're going to have a defensive focus, which they're supposed to be trying to get right now. Uh, you're going to have a rebounding focus, a low turnover focus. And you're not going to have that guy. You're not going to have a LeBron on your team or a D Wade. You don't have that when you're a grinded out type of team. Like the old Memphis Grizzlies teams. You know, uh, Mike Conley was their star and, and he, he wasn't a superstar. He's a really, really good player in his prime and he still is, you know, but he wasn't that superstar. He wasn't Chris Paul. He wasn't somebody that on, on that echelon, um, of player. So. They ground it out every game. And that's the Knicks. They are a grinded out team. Okay. Um, the difference between the Knicks and say the Grizzlies in that regard is the Grizzlies were suffering from some injuries from Conley, who was their main point guard. Point guard, he was getting hurt a lot. Okay. And because he was getting hurt a lot, you know, that, that's what they would always have to have some backup plan. Well, the Knicks are deep. So, and they're in good condition. Thank goodness. So I'm not worried about that. But they're a grinded out team. So that's actually good and bad. It's, it's bad when you play a Houston Rockets and you end up grinding out against a scrubby team. But it's good if you're going to play a Chicago Bulls and you're going to grind out a win. Now, the last time we beat them, that's what we did. We ground out a win. In fact, that was one of Kimber Walker's best games. The last time we played Chicago, I think he had 21 points. That was the one of the better games that he played, you know, against Chicago. So there's hope there. But last night's game was ugly. And, and, and to compound the problem last night, aside from the first unit being out of sorts, Derrick Rose was not having a great game. And again, the second unit, he leads the second unit. And so when the second unit, if he's not having a great game, it kind of throws off everything in the second unit. He was missing shots that he would normally hit. His three ball wasn't falling. He was missing those floaters in the lane. He just wasn't playing what we are used to seeing from Derrick Rose. And as a matter of fact, when the fourth quarter came, you did not see Derrick Rose stay out there long. In fact, you had Toppin, Burks, Quickly, Nerlens Noel. Uh, you had Toppin, Burks, Quickly, Nerlens Noel, and IQ out there. Okay. And then, um, then Toppin left the game for Julius Randle. And then they put in Evan Fournier. And that's another thing I want to get to. Ian Begley reported. I think it was yesterday or the day before that there were some players, he just said, on in, in the Knicks that are complaining about the stagnation on offense. I'm going to tell you, that's Evan Fournier. And how do I know? If you listen to every time he's talked, he's talked about ball movement. He keeps mentioning ball movement. And then the last time he was interviewed, he said, well, I don't know how many minutes I'm going to play. That's code for, 
I should be playing more. That's what that is. I don't know how many minutes I'm going to play. I'm used to playing 32 minutes a game. I'm not getting that right now. He said that. And then if you go back, look at the game. And I don't mean the condensed version of the game. Look at the full game. But you have to look at the full game. Just look at the first part of the fourth quarter. In the first part of the fourth quarter, actually Houston started making a run. And in 44 seconds into the fourth quarter, Tom Thibodeau called timeout. After the timeout, they came out of the timeout. And New Orleans Noel got hit with an elbow from Christian Wood on a three point shot and they caught and they were reviewing it to see if it was flagrant. And at that point, they cut to Evan Fournier. The camera cuts over to Evan Fournier on the sideline and he's pissed. He's pissed. And Kemba Walker is trying to calm him down because he was playing pretty good yesterday and he felt like he should have been starting the fourth quarter. Now, eventually, Tom did put him in, in the fourth quarter and he played good. He played good in the fourth quarter. But see, that complaining. That's not a good sign, okay? And one of the problems with Frank Nilakina that was brought up by Alan Hahn of all that night, there was a night I was, that he was on another uh, platform. If you remember, and I signed, I called in, and we were going back and forth about Frank. And one of the things he said that coaches said that he's. He believes he's a point guard. He doesn't like to be placed someplace else, and he just refuses to to do that. And it's a French thing that French players have this pride and this this little bit of arrogance about them. I can see that with Evan Fournier. I can see that he signed for seventy three million. He knows he's starting, and he's expecting to play thirty plus minutes a game. And he's been held out of the fourth quarter for several games. Now, yesterday, he was placed in. And why? Because he was shooting very well yesterday. Yesterday, Evan Fournier was 5 of 10 from the three-point line, 7 of 13 overall. He had 19 points. He played good, you know, offensive basketball. And and in fairness to him, the ball was moving when he would get those open three-point shots. The ball was moving. Okay? He threw up a couple of air balls in the fourth, if you recall. The first one was like a heat check, I think. Because he was really feeling like he was, he had the rhythm going. He's a rhythm player. So he throws up the ball. It was an air ball. The second one, he got a nice look into the corner. And he threw up another air ball. Hopefully that cools his jets a second. But I don't like the... So far in these last two seasons, we haven't had that internal chirping on the Knicks. We haven't had it in the locker room like that. It's been pretty steady. The Knicks all support each other. And they still doing that. Evan said some of the right things, but if you read what he said, listen to what he said. I'm used to playing 32 minutes. I'm going to get 20 now. Uh, I'm not used to that. I got to change how I play because of that. And then on the sideline, look at what, look at what he was, he was mad, man. He was pissed. I don't want that problem. I, I like guys that are good soldiers. See, like, if Kemba was to, if, if Tom was to say to Kemba, you know what, I think we need to go in a different direction at the point guard. You know, let's say he decide I'm going to I'm going to go with IQ and and I'm going to put Deuce McBride or Grimes in the second unit. And so you're not going to play as much. Kemba would be a good soldier. He'd just still be smiling. He would support everybody. I don't think that's the case with Evan Fournier. And the problem I see with this is if he if Fournier is not playing well and Thibodeau does, and Thibodeau will do it. Let me. He's already done it. He decides I'm not playing you in the fourth quarter or I'm going to start Alec Burks. At the three, because you know you're just not getting it done for me. You're going to see some problems. You're going to see some problems because I don't think he's just going to shut up and be a good soldier. I don't think so. So that may be a problem. Now the problem will be alleviated, of course, if Evan starts actually playing ball like this every night, right? I mean, I expected 19 a game from Kemba. We're not going to get that. Obviously, at least not now. We're not get, maybe we'll get it later. I'm hoping we do. Obviously, you see, look, unlike some of y'all, I acknowledge I am not a professional NBA coach. I cannot say I know more than Tom Thibodeau. And I'm not going to sit here and say I do. Like some of y'all boldly act from your, as if you coaching in the NBA. Stop it. But anyway, I'm not going to do that. So if Tom sees that Kemba should be the starting point guard, I'm not going to argue with that. Because plus, look, Timber's on a two-year deal. It's not like they signed him long term. And I want to tell you, I think with Deuce and Grimes, I'm just going to look at them too. They're not going to stay the players they are now. They're going to get better. 
especially under Tom Thibodeau. So next summer, they're going to get better. They're not going to come into camp next year accepting this, and they're not going to have to because they're going to get time. Okay, so Kemba's really a short-term solution. So I'm all right with that. You know, I think we could do better with those other two kids. I think a lot of you all agree with me, but I'm willing to accept that for now. Okay, so that aside, I don't want no problems from Evan Fournier. If he comes out scoring 19 a game, hey, we not, none of us are going to have any problems. He's going to be happy. The Knicks will be playing better. And everything will be good. But if he stinks up the joint, if he keeps coming with these five point games with one of six and all of that, we may have a problem because Tom's not going to play him. And then he's going to whine. That's, I guess, what I'm saying. He's going to start whining about it. That's going to be a problem. We may have to cut that loose if he does. Let's just hope he plays well. I'm hoping he just comes out today against Chicago. The competition is better. Maybe all of them will step up their games. And be ready to play today, and we'll and they'll play well. What I liked from Julius. Now, the thing about we know this is our guy, Julius Randle. I really think he should be getting the ball in the pinch post, and they should be playing out of him from there. But they haven't done that really. The one time they did, I saw it once, and Evan Fournier ended up with an open three, which he nailed, and Julius got him the basketball. I love that, but it wasn't being done consistently. Matter of fact. As you can see, the ball movement in general is not being done consistently. So let's say, hopefully, they figure that out, right? And over time, they'll they'll consistently do it. Because I'm watching the game, um, and I'm saying, how? I mean, what's going on? Offensively, they just look lost, all of them, and out of sync. And the few times they do move that ball, it's beautiful. They really look good when they move in that basketball, whether Kemba's on the floor or not. When Kemba's on the floor, they move that basketball, it looks really good, and they get a really good shot. I hope they continue to do that. I think Tom believes they're going to. A couple of statements, they may bother me, though. Like, have you practiced this? No. What? I'm not saying you need to have a two-hour practice, but... You got to get this ball movement down, man. People got to know where they're supposed to be. You got to have, people have to have roles in the NBA set roles that they know they're going to get. Like Alec Burke knows he's going to come off the bench. He knows he's going to play in the second unit. He knows he's going to get a certain number of minutes and he's comfortable with that. Derrick Rose too. Some of you are calling for Derrick Rose to start. I get it. But if you listen to Derrick Rose, he does not want to start. He realizes he's a second unit guy. He'll, he's a soldier. If Tom said, I need you to start and play 30 minutes, he'll do it. But he, if you recall in the beginning of the season, Kemba's the starting point guard. He didn't even, he didn't even open the door. He said, Kemba's the starting point guard. He wasn't even having it. Cause I think he's more comfortable with the second unit. They obviously know how to play together. Right? There's no confusion with them. So today against Chicago. I'm hoping they lift up their game according to the competition. Because if they don't, Chicago going to destroy us. If they do, we could we could grind out a win again in the United Center. We could do that. I'm hoping Evan Fournier really has found a rhythm. And and I noticed in all fairness to fair to Fournier, he needs to get his shots off of good ball movement. And I noticed that when he does get his shots off a of good ball movement, he really does consistently knock it down. So we need some good ball movement. Our boy Randall, though. Um, now he had only two turnovers the other night, but they, when he does turnovers, it just looks bad because they're stupid turnovers. They're low IQ turnovers. That's what it is. It's not like he threw a good pass into somebody's chest and the guy dropped the ball or he threw a good pass in the corner. And the guy stepped on the line and is out of bounds. You know, that happens. But his turnovers are just low IQ turnovers. Like he's trying to dribble through three guys or, you know, usually it's that, you know, uh, or he's jumping in the air and he's spinning and trying to throw a pass. That kind of stuff. <laughs> he does that. Um, he did not shoot the ball well, four of 15, two of six, but. I like the fact that he didn't force his offense most of the time. I mean, he did get his 15 shots. He's going to get his. I like the fact that he had nine assists and he had 10 boards. I like that. And I hope he continues to do that. Do not force the game. Let the game come to him. He's really a guy 
that needs to let the game come to him. And he needs to be consistent in hitting those boards and playing some defense. His IQ is low. He doesn't always know to rotate. I'm noticing that. He's not like he, you should, you would think that he could read a play and see it developing, but he doesn't. He's very slow at doing that. Um, he's not the type of guy, you know, he's not an ace defender like that. Ace defenders not only physically stay in front of you, not only do they rotate well, but they can see a play developing. LeBron is great at that. He knows what you're getting ready to run and he's already ready for it, no matter what it is. Okay. Cause he's studied you and he knows Tom wants all of our players to do that. Julius just happens to not be very good at that. He's just not. Okay. So if you could get him playing head up or even on a string a little bit, he's good. But if the team is running an off ball movement, he's not going to see it. Even if you showed it to him, that's the frustrating thing. Houston did that a couple of times yesterday. So there's that. Um, but against Chicago, we got to be on that game. I am really expecting Derrick Rose to break out of his slump today. He's in a bit of a slump. You've seen it. But we're playing in his hometown today. And he's traditionally played very well in Chicago. So I am expecting D. Rose. And he's just too good. They're going. D. De Rose is just too good. He's not going to stay in the slump. Even at 33, he's not going to stay in the slump for long. He's going to break out of it. OB Toppin. What can we say? Everybody's talking about his energy. Yes, he brings the energy. He brings energy and defense and he runs the floor and he gets big rebounds. And then, as we saw the other night, he starts to hit big three pointers sometimes. He's a keeper. Obviously, he's a keeper. Alec Burke, what you going to say? I told you, some of y'all are talking about trading him. You're crazy. You know, he's a money dude. He's Dennis Johnson, if y'all remember him. He's a money guy. So you, you want him in fourth quarter. You want him in the playoffs. His best games are in the playoffs. You want Alec Burks. He's a money guy, especially now. He's in his prime. He's he's at the peak of his physical powers and his his IQ is at his peak. He does them dumb passes sometimes, but hey, he's not a perfect player. He's not a superstar, but he's a money player, as you saw last night. If it wasn't for Alec Burks, we lose against Houston yesterday. We lose. Okay. Alec Burks came out six of seven from the three point line. My goodness, man. Five boys, three assists, five steals. That's defense right there. So yeah, he's a keeper. Nerlens Noel is ready to go. He's ready to go to war. Mitchell Robinson took an elbow to the nose, which I thought broke his nose, but they named it as a nose bruise is what Rebecca Harlow said. It was a nose bruise, but they put the sticks up in his nose. Usually that, that's, you know, to keep the nose straight because it's broken. Um, but I think either way, he's going to wear a mask today. You'll probably see him out there today with a mask on and he'll be good. In fact, he should probably wear a mask from now on, you know, um, sort of like, um, there's a guy in Portland that does that. I forgot his name. He's a really good defender. Co Covington. He does that. He wears a mask all the time. He, need, he probably needs to do that. Protect his face because he, he's always getting smacked in the face. Uh, Ju uh, Robinson is, uh, but we need him out there. Um, and RJ. RJ's all right. He was 4 of 13 yesterday, 1 of 5, shot the ball horribly, had the Ray Charles glasses on yesterday, scored 11 points, wasn't his best game. It was a physical game. I think that's part of, of the so-called problem, if you want to call it that. I think RJ is now realizing the refs are letting the game be played a little bit more aggressively, and I think that suits him. And now that he's coming to their understanding that, oh, they're going to let us be more physical. I think you're going to see a lot more bully ball. You're going to see a lot more RJ better in that, in that regard. I think that suits him. Okay. That's why I said we're going to be a grinded out team. Um, his jump shot's going to come. You remember last year, he was one for 21 at one point earlier in the season. So his jump shot's going to come eventually. His rhythm's going to come. His jump shot's going to come. And you know, he's going to work on it. So he'll be all right. No, I think we'll be good to go. I still say top six in the East. And if Mitch stays healthy, and, and if Mitch and Nerland stay healthy, both of them, top three in the East. I'm still with that. I don't care what it's eight, it's what, nine and seven right now. I'm not worried about it. Today's going to be a big telling day. The last game was a statement game. This is going to be a telltale game. Also, we're in Chicago coming off a bad win, if there's such a thing, against Houston. Uh, we're going to see if they play up to the competition. I'm accepting Kemba now. I have to. What am I going to do? You know, keep whining about some of y'all just keep beating your head up against the wall. It's, hey, if he's not going to play anybody but Kemba, that's what he's going to do. Okay. I'm hoping Kemba really sits today, but let's see what happens because this is the back to back. But he did get, you know, he got hammered pretty hard yesterday on the ground. Uh, so I'm not sure. 
on his in his knee and his, le- his left knee his left elbow took it and then do uh Tice landed on his right foot his, on his right knee as well so I wouldn't be surprised if he was too sore to go today but we'll see he played his best game against Chicago last time so we'll see but I'm going to accept Tom's judgment on this if he wants Kemba to play if he thinks Kemba's not gonna kill us okay let's go Tom Tibbs you know and Tibbs I trust you know what I'm saying it is what it is so yeah, I'm looking for us to play a bounce back type of game against Chicago, a grind it out type of game today. Um, and let's see what happens. Now, some of you asked, which I understand, are we going to see a deuce sighting? We just did a 25 and 9 spot the other night, one game in the G League, 25 and 9. And and I find that very impressive on a couple of levels. First of all, he has not been playing at all. He had to be rusty, right? He had to be a little rusty. He comes out 25 and 9. It was, I think it's the first game the Westchester Knicks won. And then uh, Samanic ended up getting a high, season high 32. And a lot of those were assists from Deuce. So Deuce is going to be a player. We know that Grimes can come out and show out with that with that Allen Houston jump shot. He plays high IQ. He plays defense. So are we going to see some of them today? I don't know. I don't know. I, I doubt it. Unless Kemba is out. If Kemba doesn't play and if Tom decides to start a Burks, you might see both of them. You might see both of them, you know, but we'll have to see what happens. Um, they've certainly earned the right to get some minutes, I believe, but it's up to Tom again and Tom we trust. So we'll go from there. Again, the, the reason I'm looking for these two guys to play is unlike, like I said, unlike Frank Nilakina, Tom picked these guys. These are guys that the Knicks drafted with Tom insisting they get them. So they did. Okay. So, you know, okay, you asked for these guys. Are you going to play them? You know, so we're going to see what happens with that. Um, other than that, tonight's the game. Uh, I think I'm going to be with uh, my man Jay Ellis on the Nick of Time show on YouTube after the game tonight. And so uh, we'll see. Uh, you know, I always have fun with Jay Ellis. That's my man right there. Maybe Ron G be in the building also. So all three of us will be on there having fun. And we'll hopefully see some of y'all. Uh, and we're hopefully doing that. After a Knicks win. Please enjoy the rest of your weekend. Shalom.